Hello there, welcome to my channel. Today we are doing this video on graduate studies abroad and we are going to find out whether having no GRE, no TOEFL or IELTS or application fee is really a possibility when applying for graduate schools abroad. Okay, before we move on to that, I'm going to do a quick introduction. My name is Jeanette, once again, I attended Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Ghana, and I studied BSc Statistics. I'm a Ghanaian, obviously, but yeah, that would be it. And the reason why I'm really pushing to do videos like this is because whilst I was in school, I heard about things like this, but I wasn't so much into details, and I, I didn't take them as seriously as I should have. Right, because knowing these things gives you an option. And whilst in school, you can have that in mind and setting your goals and everything just makes it worthwhile, I guess. So doing this is for any university student out there, whether you are in your first year, your second year, third year, or final year, or whether you're ending down with school, this video is for you so you can watch it, share it with your friends and family so that they can also learn from it. Okay, let's dive right into it. So today we are looking at the requirements for a graduate studies abroad. Okay. The first thing obviously is to have completed your bachelor's degree because if you want to, um, do your graduate studies, especially in abroad, you need your bachelor's degree and this comes in the form of your school certificates, okay? And sometimes it's possible the universities or the graduate schools open their portals for admission very early. So whilst you're a final year in school, you, you get a chance to apply. And by then it's possible not to have your school certificate so you will need your academic transcripts for that at that point. Yeah, this will lead me to the second requirement. This is the academic transcript. As I was mentioning, you would need this and it comes in the form of the results you get each semester. So from semester one to the current semester you are in whilst applying for your graduate school, yes, this all counts. Then the next thing is the recommendation letter or recommendation letters. So this can be taken from your academic lecturers or employers, okay? And in most of the graduate schools, you would need at least two and at most probably three. For the universities I've come across, it's either they, they require two recommendation letters or three. So just have this in mind. And this is very important because it means that while you're in school, you have to make sure you're building the kind of rapport you need to build with your lecturers. Okay, so whether in class you ask questions, whether at a class, you go to their office to just converse, talk about something you don't understand, just build that relationship because you need good recommendation letters. The lecturers would, if you are taking the recommendation letter from lecturers, they would have to know what you, you are about, okay, what you do and your goals and everything. Helping them write a good recommendation letter would would really help you in getting a good school, of course. So whatever the case, just try, at least every week, try to talk to one lecturer, okay? You can go to their office or any way you can make it happen. Just do your best. And also you can get recommendation letters from your employers, okay? This can be people you intend with. And I know in Ghana, we have national service where the final years after school get to do a one year kind of contract basis work. 
yeah and from there you can do the kind of a call with your employers to, to get your recommendation letter should in case you need it so this is also possible then the next would be your cv or resume okay yeah you might be wondering why does my cv have to be in this as I'm applying for graduate school. Well, they are very important, okay? Because the school you're applying for needs to have an idea about you, okay? What you've done before, the internships you've done, they need to know more about you. So this is a good way to do that. And it's recommended to have a one-page CV, okay? so. If you must go beyond that at maximum, it should be two pages, okay? It should, everything should be very concise and precise, yeah. Then the next is your proof of identification, okay? Especially when you are, when you are applying for graduate schools abroad, you need to know that in case you are given admission, it can actually come there. So whether a passport or identity card, it should be enough for them to know that, yeah, it should, in case we give the student admission, he or she would be able to make it. Yeah, so this is important. Then you also need a proof of proficiency in English. Okay, this comes, I'm sure most of us saw uh, the, this requirement as probably not needed. That's why we're watching this. Yeah, so you stay tuned and we dive into that. Yeah, so you would need your, either your English proficiency certificate, TOEFL results, IELTS results, yeah. And this is very dependent on the schools you're applying for, okay. Some schools just state that if your, if your tertiary for, tertiary downwards to um, SHS, um, junior high school, down there if your education was in English. They, they take English proficiency certificates. Yes, they stated there. But there are others that whether you spoke English or whether you your, your education or instructions were in English or not, they still require to for or IELTS. Yes, some also state that. So it just depends on the schools you're applying for and to be taking those of this. And I know in Kenya, that's a school I went, so I know about that. You can get your English proficiency certificate at the English department, yes. And I'm sure for other schools, you can just make inquiries at your department, you know where you can get the certificate. And for my school, which is KNEST, you need either your transcript, your academic transcript, or your school certificate in order to get this English proficiency certificate. So yeah, this that should do it. Then the next thing is your statement of purpose, popularly known as SOP. In some schools, they prefer to it as personal statements or motivation letter, but this is a major requirement in most applications because the school wants to know who you are once again and why you're applying to their school and why you're choosing that particular program, okay? They want to know whether your goals are really aligned with whatever program you're choosing and everything. So this is a very important part of your application. And later on, I'll be doing videos and talking about some of these topics into detail. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so and be updated about more videos to come. Then the next is GRE test or your GMAT test. Okay, so this is also dependent on the schools you are applying to. Some require this and some don't. Okay, it's also just a, a test that strengthens your your degree, your bachelor's degree, the score she gets from there. So someone who writes GRE and adds to their results from bachelor's can have a higher chance of getting admission to some programs. Yeah, that is very possible, but you should also know that it's possible not to 
hand this in during your application, you must still be considered. Uh, yeah, that's what you should know about that. Then also we have the application fee. Okay, so when you are applying for some of these schools, after sending all your documents and everything, they require that you pay an application fee. Some call it handling fee. And for some of the schools I've seen so far, this ranges between $50 to about $100. It's, it's very so, it's very dependent on the school, but there's an application fee. And some schools waive it. So that's a real possibility, okay? You can get some schools that, that don't require this at all. Yes, so this list us to this. Is it true that without GRE, without the four or IELTS or application fee, you can actually get admission into a graduate school abroad? Yes, 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 yes. It is very true. Okay, but you should just note that sometimes you can get a school that requires application fee but doesn't require any GRE or to or IELTS or the other way around. So it's very dependent on the schools and it requires maximum research. Okay, when you are researching on the schools to choose the programs to choose and all that, you really have to take note of all this. They are very important. Yes, so this leads me to the close of this video. As I went on, I'm going to do more videos with regards to some topics in here. So please subscribe to my channel and, and be notified of more videos to come, okay? And like this content, comment, let me know what you are thinking about this video. Are there things that I spoke about that you were not aware of? Or are there things that you are aware of? You can make that comment. And if you have recommendations for other videos as well, just let me know. I'll be happy to see them. And if you are already subscribed, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please watch the videos to the end, okay? And keep on sharing and sharing and sharing. And yeah, thank you for being with me from now. And hopefully we'll, we'll keep on going further and further. Bye.